Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take you through a few scenarios on how to fix woodworking mistakes. And wood is not perfect. Sometimes there's knots and cracks and uh, grain tears and pieces chip out. And sometimes we make mistakes. I make lots of mistakes. Uh, so I'm getting to be quite a professional at figuring out how to fix them. So let's jump in and have a look at some of these. Now, when it comes to fixing mistakes in wood, uh, we often t think automatically to turn to some sort of a filler. And whether you make your own fillers or whether you purchase fillers, uh, my experience with them is none of them work well. The homemade ones don't work well because they don't stain well. The commercial ones don't work well because they don't hold stains very well. They say they won't dry out, but they do. They dry out and then they fall out. And, you know, a year, two, five years later, you end up with holes in the wood where this uh, filler used to be. The other kind of fillers that you can use are fillers, for example, filling uh, things like nail holes. Um, and this is like a grease pencil, and this comes in a variety of different colors. I don't know why I have this one, um, but it just will fill that hole, and then you can take that and sort of sand that down and make that so that it blends in. The other form of this is for things like scratches, and if you have scratches, and again, this comes in, these come in different, oh, and this one's dried out, <laughs> come in different colors uh, so that you can sort of, use a felt pen basically that's all it is is a felt pen that will sort of um, it doesn't eliminate the scratch it just makes it um, more invisible so those are things that can work on finished uh, on finished woodworking these if you can avoid using any kind of filler you're far better off and there's lots of different ways that we can do fixes and some of them i'm going to cover here today the most common woodworking repair are chair rungs and Often they are broken, and if you have one that breaks like this with a long crack like that, the easiest thing to do, don't even take it out of the chair, just fill that as best you can with glue, just yellow glue like that, then put a clamp on it if you can. If it's round, you might need to use some plastic electrical tape as a clamp. Get rid of the excess glue on top and let that sit for 48 hours and that should fix that. If on the other hand, your rung has broken like this, that is not repairable, that you need to replace. And when you replace a rung, again, square or round, um, there's a quick way of doing that and that is to fill the ends with a mixture of epoxy and glue and drill a hole and insert a commercial dowel in that and you can do the same thing in your chair leg again round or square uh, and just fit it in like that that's a good easy quick fix another common repair is dowels that are loose so you get a, a chair rung that's loose and when that happens the quickest way to fix that is to take the uh, chair, chair rung out put a saw cut in it with a very fine saw and make yourself a very thin wedge. And when you insert it, and you're probably going to need to do this in both legs, do not put it vertically because this is going to, the when you put this in with the uh, wedge in there, it's going to tend to want to push that leg end apart. And you don't want to do that because you have you could split the, the chair leg. What you want to do is you want to put it in horizontally like this and that way that dowel will expand. So your wedge is probably going to be maybe three quarters of an inch long and as you push it in and hit the back of that chair leg with that wedge it's going to drive it in a little deeper and that will make that expand. So you put glue on that drive that wedge and that end in and let that sit for 48 hours and that should be a quick fix for you. Now if you're making boxes or maybe picture frames sometimes it's hard to get nice crisp edges. Now I've made a demonstration here and in this case I've done an angled uh, sort of an, a 45 degree edge and that might be the edge of your box. Now this one actually is pretty good but one of the things that you can do to fix these up is to just run, you know, and, and I don't know, know if this one's going to make any difference, but just run a 
circular around object over the edge, the very corner. And basically what that does is it helps to round over the wood. And it's a very quick and easy way of getting a good, a really good fit in there. And then you can go ahead and uh, sand and, and um, stain as you normally would. Now, if you've got a big gap or maybe you just want to add some color to your box, here's a quick idea. In this case, I've just got a little chunk of uh, purple heart and I have a big block of it like this and I use this big block for just for things like this doing little bits of highlighting. I've already preset the saw up and what I'm going to do I'm going to take a little chunk right out of the corner and use this to replace that because maybe I've got a bad corner in there. So let's just go ahead and cut that out. Now the little piece I'm going to cut out of the very end, it's going to kick back on me because I have the saw set up in such a way that I, all I have to do is turn the wood around. So you might see that kick out the back here. And there we go. And that's just how easy that is. You can see that uh, piece that I cut out of there. Uh, and there's the piece of purple heart that would fit in there. Now I've actually sand already pre-sanded this down a little bit. So it's actually fitting uh, near perfect in there. So all it would need to do is glue that in there. Uh, and that's ready to go. And of course, you'll need to cut, would need to cut the top of that off because it's a little bit high. Uh, but what a great way of fixing a corner and making it look like it's a feature. Now the other advantage of using something dark like this, like Purple Heart, is that when you have contrasting woods like this, if you have two light woods together, see how you can see the gap in there? If those were dark woods, you wouldn't be able to see that. And that's one of the joys of using dark woods is especially when you're using them in a situation like this is the dark wood tends to hide that saw cut in there so it makes it look even better so there's a quick fix for boxes. Now the other thing we can do for a lot of pieces of wood where there's something either the wood is cracked and we don't want it to split anymore or if there's a real nasty knot like this one we can use something called a butterfly some people call them bow ties and we can cut an insert out and put that in the new location so we can cut a pocket for it then we get to make a matching insert to go in it now i'm going to work on the bottom of this board here because this knot is real nasty and the reason it's real nasty is it actually follows all the way along here so I'm probably not going to use the bottom of this board but what I'm going to do I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the board here and we'll we'll pretend there's a, a slit down here as a crack in the wood that I don't want to have it run away on me so I'm going to make a pocket down here and just show you how easy it is to do that. Now you can cut these things out by hand. I have an insert for my router and there's a little collar here. You can probably see it. I have to, I'm going to have to take it off in a minute anyway, but I'm going to leave it on for now. There's a collar. See that little collar? It fits on another little one inside there. And to make the pocket, you have to leave the collar on and to cut the insert that goes into the pocket, you take this little collar off and all you do is just follow around this template and just clean it out. So I'm going to take a moment now and put some double sided glue tape on here, lock this down on here and then we'll cut the pocket out. Okay, I've already set my depth on the router and this is going to take a little while because I have to trace the outside and then I'm going to cut a bunch of slots on the inside so it's easier for me to get out with the chisel. So this will take a while but we'll speed it up.
Now, as you can see with this method, you end up with little rounded over corners because, of course, the router bit is round. But what I like to do is to go in there with a sharp knife or a chisel and just put some points on that because the insert that's going to go in here does have sharp points. Let's see, you can, there it is. And inside, there's actually a little rubber gasket in there that keeps that on there. Okay, now I need to do the same thing on this one. Um, but now with the collar off. There we go. And there's what that, that's what that finished bow tie looks like. I've just barely touched the edges just to take a little bit of the fuzziness off and that will actually fit right in there nice and tight. Now, if you're doing some fitting with these and you want to be able to pop them back out, the best thing is to use some dental floss like that and just use that underneath it. And then you have a way of popping that back out so that you can get that in and out easily. But there's a quick way of preventing cracks from getting larger or for hiding some nasty knots or nasty cuts in wood. Now, before I leave, I want to remind you, I have a special video coming up in the next week or two. I haven't, still haven't uh, nailed down the date exactly yet, but if you haven't subscribed, now would be a great time to do that and hit the notification bell so you get notified when that video comes up. I also did another video uh, quite some time ago on CA glues and all sorts of fixes that you can use in the workshop using CA glue. Uh, so that kind of goes along with the theme of this video as well. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.